fiery horse with the speed of light, the cloud of dust, and the hearty hi Silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. There's danger on the trail ahead. It was a sight for aching, sun-tortured eyes, a little depot painted red. On one side, there was a grove of cottonwood trees, and on the other, a wooden water tank. Ever since sunrise, the Lone Ranger and Tonto had been riding over one of the roughest and most desolate stretches of desert in the West. And now, although it was only an ugly little box of a railroad station, it was the most welcome sight in the world. Even Silver, the masked man's powerful white stallion, sensed relief from the blazing sun. He knew that rest and fresh water lay ahead. Take it easy, boy. We'll be there in just a few minutes. As they trotted down the long, mesquite-studded slope toward the thin, glittering streaks of rail that rimmed the valley, the Lone Ranger's keen eyes took in every detail of a scene before him. Suddenly, he raised his arms as a signal to Tonto and reined up sharply. Ho! Ho, Silver! Ho! Tonto! Tonto! What's the name of this way station? Uh, he not know. There's a water tank and a telegraph office. Must have a name. Uh -huh. Look, the right side by the platform. Aren't there two saddle horses? Ah. Uh, maybe riders inside station. Wait for train. Yes, that's possible. But why did they leave their horses there in the sun when there's a hitch rack under the trees? Uh, that bad. Well, there's one way to find out. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Oh, boy, ho, ho. Oh, Scout, hold on, hold on. Leave them here in the shade, Tonto. Easy, big fella. Uh, uh. Get your wind, Silver, then you can drink. Come on, Tonto. Anybody here? That's strange. Doesn't seem to sure be any... Sure is. What do you... Mask man, religion, outlaws. We're not outlaws. All we want is a drink of water. What are you... Not sure. Well, just tell us where it is. We'll help ourselves. No, no, I'll get it for you. Well, don't bother. We'll... No, you better stay out there in the waiting room. It's, it's against the law for me to let anybody come back here in the office. Whatever you say. Yeah, you and the you better wait right there. I'll wrestle up a dipper and bring you a Otto. I don't think this man is the station agent here. Mm -hmm. He acts strange. There's no sign of whoever rides the two horses outside. Kim Sabi. Yeah. Door over there. Closed tight. Yes, Toto. I've noticed that. When he comes back, I'll try. Here's your water, stranger. Oh, 
Thanks. Have some, Tonto? Ah. It's got pretty lonely being a station agent in a spot like this. Yeah, it does. Ever have any visitors? Now, look here, stranger. I'm busy. I've got work to do. You got your drink of water now, Van Moose? I, uh, I was just wondering about that door over there. Is that the room where you store freight? That's my business. The railroad company don't answer questions from hombres like you. Are you sure it's the railroad company? I'm sure of one thing. You had better clear out of here and fast. And that gun, I suppose, is to strengthen your advice. I reckon it can do all the talking I'll need. Now get a move on. I'd rather not. You're asking for it? No, my hand. Me get him. Red, red, they got this. Watch out, Tuttle. The door. Oh. Oh. This quiet. Come on, Brophy. Keep us happy. Tuttle, you're hurt. I don't mean that hurt bad. You go catch Crook. They're not important. <laughs> here, let me see where that bullet nicked you. Uh, it's in the shoulder. It's not bad. Me fix it here, all right. Here, here. We'll use a strip from this handkerchief. <laughs> Steady. Turn your shoulder over this way. Uh, Stand still now. Uh, In just a second. That doesn't look too bad. There. That better? Uh, Otto, the door to the room where that red-headed outlaw was hiding. Uh, There's someone lying on the floor in there. Wait. Man dead? Yes. Shot through the heart. Probably the station agent. They killed him so they could... That's it. Nino Savi. The train... They killed the agent so they could hold up the train. Oh. It'll be here in a minute. Come on, Tonto. We'd better leave. I'm afraid the circumstances would be hard to explain. We not run away from trouble. Of course not. We can be of more help if we're not under suspicion. Come on. We'll wait in that clump of cottonwoods. Junction. Watch your step, Mr. Brewster. Yes, I'll watch my Never step. Never mind, conductor. I'll help you. No, Kurt, you get the bags. I'll help Father. No, let go my arms, both of you. I'm not so old yet that I have to be lifted off a train. All set, Mr. Brewster. I will be as soon as I get back to the ranch. Warren. Warren. Now, where the tarnations of the buckboard? Larkin. Yes, Mr. Brewster. I thought I told you to have a couple of the ranch hands waiting for us here at the depot. How are we going to ride home? I can't understand. Maybe they're waiting inside. I'll go and see. Oh, no, no, Miss Miller. You stay here with your father. I'll go. I declare a bunch of lazy cowhands. Haven't got gumption enough to meet a train. Now, Father, Uh, remember the doctor said you weren't to get excited. Who's excited? Where's Larkin? He's gone to look for the boys who were supposed to meet us. Maybe they're around. I'm not going to stand around here and wait all day. Father. You sit there and keep an eye on them valises. I'll rustle Larkin and the cowpokes. Father, you aren't supposed to... Oh, well, he'll do it anyway. Father! What was it? Somebody sniping at us in the hill back of the depot. Get down, Millie. Hug the dirt. Who could it be? Stay down here, Millie. Millie! Oh. Father! Father, you're excited. No. Oh. Me not hurt. Not hurt, Millie. I... I... Father. Father! man has been hit, Tonto. Uh, Where did that shot come from? Me not see. We may be able to help. Come on, Silver. Get him up, scout. Oh, Silver. Oh, boy. Oh, scout. Oh, boy. Oh, 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 big fella. Can we help? An outlaw and an Indian. Maybe we can help you. You've killed him. Killed my father. Oh, you're mistaken. We're not outlaws and we didn't fire those shots. What happened? Mr. Brewster. Father's been shot. He's... I heard the shots and ran back as quick as I could. Ran back from where? Well, I was going back to... An outlaw. So it was you who... No, it wasn't. Were you? Reach for that gun and I'll shoot. Oh, so you got the drop on me. You killed Mr. Brewster. Now I suppose Millie and I are next. I haven't killed anyone. But quite by accident, my Indian friend and I saw the shooting. We were in that grove of trees over there. Yeah? If you're not a murderer and outlaw, what are you wearing that mask for? A reason of my own. 
But if you'll tell me something about yourself and this man who was shot, maybe I can help find the murderer. <laughs> That's a laugh. A murdering gunslinger offering to find himself. Evidently, you don't want any help. All I want is for you to take those gun sights off of me for half a second. Under the circumstances, it's impossible. Hmm, really tough. When you got the drop on somebody, ain't you? The oddest part about this whole thing is that there should be two murders here on the same day. Two murders? Yes. The station agent was killed not over an hour ago. The station agent? And I suppose you just happened to come along and find him dead. Yes, that's right. Oh, you... The station agent? Then maybe whoever killed him shot my father. That's what I was thinking. I saw the men who did it. Who? A tall, red-headed man. Oh, about middle-aged. Another one he called Brophy. Brophy? Kurt, that sounds like Red Colton and Brophy from the Circle T. Of course it ain't. This hombre did the killing himself. And he's the one who shot your pa. You seem to know quite a bit about it. Well, it's a good thing you're holding the trigger end of that shooting iron. If it wasn't for that, I'd... Uh, Tonto, come here. Ah, uh, me come. This man seems to think I'm taking an unfair advantage of him. He has a gun on his hip. Go over and get it. Uh, oh, you want to be sure I won't outdraw you. Is that it? Uh. Me gun, gun. Good. Uh, here, hold my gun, too. Uh -huh. Hey, what the... <laughs> now I no longer have a drop on you. What are you going to do about it? Plenty. I'm waiting. Why, uh, you... This was your idea. Kurt! He isn't hurt. He'll be all right. Why did you do that? To avoid more shooting. I, I don't know what to say. I'm so confused. My father's been killed, and you say the station agent's dead? Why? Why? I don't know, but I'm going to find out. Who are you? Why anyone should want to kill your father is a more important question. I still can't believe it. Father didn't have an enemy in the world. Do you mind telling me who you are and who he is? I'm Millie Brewster. He's Kurt Larkin, foreman of the Bar F, our ranch in the valley. And how do you happen to be here at this particular way station today? This is Cooley Junction, the nearest railroad point to the ranch. Kurt and I had taken father into Pearl City to see a doctor. We, we'd just gotten off the train when... Yes, I know the rest. I saw it happen. Some of the boys from the ranch were supposed to meet us here with a rig or a buckboard so Father could ride home. But, but now he won't be... I know how you feel. You have my deepest sympathy. You, you don't talk like an outlaw. I'm not. And I want to help you. How? Find whoever committed these murders and discover the reason for them. Can you do that? I can try. Oh, if there was only some way Who's to... that coming? Otto, can you see? Ah. Uh, four, maybe five men. And they ride hard. It must be the boys from the ranch. They'll help you take care of your father. Here, Silver. Where are you going? Easy, big fella. I'll ride into the next town and report the station agent's murder to the sheriff. Naturally, you'll report the other one. I don't know whether to trust you or not. Of course you don't. If you go, the boys can run you down. If I tell them to. Well, that's up to you. Oh, uh, here's Mr. Larkin's gun. Give it to him when he wakes up. Come on, Silver. Get him up, scout. I don't know why, but I am going to trust him. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. to continue our story. On the evening of the third day after Sam Brewster's murder, Millie sat alone in the large living room of the Bar F ranch house. The numbing shock of her father's sudden death was somewhat lessened now, but the tension of the past three days had taken its toll. She was very tired and very lonely. Why, Kurt? Yes. I figured you'd be alone, Millie. There's some things we got to talk over. Things? Business. Uh, now that your pa's gone, how about everything here at Circle T? We'll carry on, of course. That's the way Dad would have wanted it. Oh, I'm glad to hear you say that, Millie. Especially the, uh, the we part. What do you mean? Yeah, you'll find out all about it tomorrow. Lawyer's coming out from Pearl City. A fellow named, uh, Crawford. What in the world are you talking about? Well, your pa's will. This lawyer's bringing it out. I didn't know Dad had ever made a will. Sure he did. 
Made it last week when we were in Pearl City. That's strange. He didn't mention it to me. Are you sure? I saw it with my own eyes. <laughs> I witnessed it. I wonder why he didn't say something to me. Well, I guess he figured you might worry. You know, him, uh, him having a bad heart and all. No, I, I don't understand it. You will tomorrow. What are you trying to say, Kurt? Guess I might as well tell you. You'll hear from Crawford anyway. Hear what? That your pa left this whole layout to me. What? Yep. Lock, stock, and barrel. I don't believe it. Well, you'll have to. Oh, thing's legal. In black and white. You mean my own father would leave the bar F to a, to a stranger? Well, I'm not exactly a stranger, Millie. I worked for your pa for over five years. It's ridiculous. But I know how you feel, and I'm willing to do the right thing. What is it? Share it with you. I think you're entitled to half of the bar F. You're very generous, Kurt. Sure, we'll run the place together. <laughs> After all, a man's got to get married, married sometime. Married? Well, you know I've been sweet on you, Millie. First I... you tell me the ranch is no longer my home, then you offer to marry me. Why not? I wouldn't marry you, Kurt Larkin, if you owned every ranch in the state. You're kind of snippy, ain't you? You'll change your tune tomorrow. Get out of here. Get out. Now, wait a minute. You can't order me around. This is my home, and I don't want you in it. It'll be my home tomorrow. It's mine tonight. Now, get out. All right. But wait till tomorrow after that will is read. I don't believe Dad ever made a will. Uh, you'll see. Even if he did, he also kept a daily journal every day for the past 30 years. If he intended to make a will, it would be mentioned in the journal. Maybe it is. I'll let you know tomorrow, Mr. Larkin. No, 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 Millie. Maybe we can... Get out! This. All right. It's your deal now. But my turn's coming. As Kurt Larkin left the ranch house, he turned toward the corral. But before he reached it, he stopped by a small tool shed where two men waited in the shadows. St Larkin. Larkin. Shut up, I see you. We've been waiting for over an hour. Yeah, I've been talking to the girl. Yeah? Has she caught on yet? Yeah, she will when Crawford gets here tomorrow. How about her payoff? You promised 200 cash right after the job. After what job? I had to do it myself. That wasn't our fault. The master hombre ambled into the depot and queered everything. Yeah. We'd no sooner beef the station agent... I know all about it. ...and shell out some dinero and we'll be drifting back to the Circle T. Why should I pay you for something you bungled? Now, wait a minute, Larkin. You'd better shell out or we'll do some talking that won't be so healthy for yeah, you. Yeah, Sheriff Gars might like to know just who did do the Brewster killing. Why? Oh, he... Careful, Larkin. I'm awful handy with this six-gun. Yeah, you're right. We're all in it together. I've got the money for both of you, but there's one little job we got to do first. What is it? I just found out the old man kept a journal, and he wrote in it every day. Well? The will that Crawford and I wrangled him into signing by pretending it was a prescription for medicine, it might not hold up. How come? Well, if the girl takes it into her head to go to court, that journal might hurt me. What's a journal? A book with writing in it. I never knew the old coot kept one of these things, but maybe he did. Where is it now? It must be in his desk in the front room of the house. Why don't you get it yourself? I want to keep clear of the place until after tomorrow. How much is it worth to you? Another 200. Cash? On the line the minute you hand it over. All right. Come on, Red. No, no. Wait. We'll have to stall for a couple of hours till after Millie goes to sleep. How do we get in the place? Any of those windows are all unlocked. You wait for us here. No. The other side of the corral. How do we know this journal thingamabob? It's a big, flat book in the old man's desk. Now, be careful and don't make any noise. That Millie Brewster can handle a gun almost as, as good as she can talk. It was several hours later that Millie awoke suddenly from a sound sleep. Her room was on the second floor of the rambling old ranch house and directly above the living room. For a moment, she was puzzled, then instantly alert because among the many familiar night noises of the old house, she detected a new sound, the sound of a creaking door and cautious footsteps somewhere in the room below her. Millie stepped out of bed quickly and slipped into a dressing gown. As she left the bedroom, she picked up a small pearl-handled gun. Slowly and without making a sound in the carpeted hallway, 
She crept to the head of the stairs. The strange sounds in the large room were much more distinct now. Halfway down the stairs, she stopped. At the far end of the living room, she saw a small circle of light from a bullseye lantern. It was shining on her father's old-fashioned roll-top desk and silhouetting the figures of two men. Millie was more annoyed than frightened. She leveled her gun and spoke in a sharp, clear voice. If either of you move, I'll shoot. What in the girl? Put your hands up and walk this way. Both of you. Don't try to reach for a gun. I said walk this way. Well, you heard what she said. Start walking. I'll be right behind you. Yeah, sure. Millie had made a grave mistake. In ordering the men to walk toward her, she allowed one of them to stand in front of the lantern. He made the most of the opportunity. I'll get the light. You grab the book. I got it, and I'm going to... Run for it. The entire ranch was aroused by the shooting. Millie was unharmed, but as further sleep was out of the question, she dressed quickly and ordered one of the cowhands to saddle her favorite pony. Steady, boy. Steady. Millie. Steady. Millie, what happened? You're a little bit late, aren't you, Kurt? Well, I was in bed when I heard the shooting. Dressed as quick as I could. What's wrong? Two men tried to rob the house. Robbers? Which way'd they go? The boys and I'll trail them. Never mind. I'm going into town and report it to Mr. Giles, the sheriff. I'll go with you. No, Kurt. I'd rather go alone. Come on, boy. All right, you cowpokes. You heard what Miss Brewster said. Get back to the bunkhouse. Logan, that girl can sure handle the shooting iron. Yeah, she almost plugged it. Hey, not so loud. Did you get the journal? Right here. How about the payoff? Let me see the book. It'll be up to cash first, Larkin. Yeah, all right. Here. 400 in gold in this bag. I hope you're telling the truth, because if you're Give not... Give me the journal. Uh, you know, I'm glad I found out the name of one of those things. I've seen them lots of times, but I never knew what they was called. You fools, you half-witted fools. What's wrong? That's the book, ain't no, it? No, of course not. This is a, a picture album. As Millie rode toward town, her mind was filled with hundreds of unanswered questions. Was she really going to lose the Bar F Ranch? Had her father actually made a will leaving it to Kurt Larkin? Before she could speculate further, she was aware of a large white horse standing by the trail several hundred yards ahead. As she drew nearer, she recognized the rider. It was the masked man who had promised to help her. Millie reined up sharply. Oh, boy. Oh, oh, oh. I've been waiting for you. Waiting? Cotto and I saw you leave the ranch, so we took a shortcut and waited for you here. I'm on my way to see Sheriff Giles. Yes, I guessed as much. That's why I told him to come out to your ranch. He'll be along here any minute. You told the sheriff to come to the Bar F? Why? To arrest the man who murdered your father. Who is it? Kurt Larkin. Are you sure? Positive. His own gun will convict him. I've suspicioned Kurt ever since that day Dad was killed. And more than ever this evening. Well, what happened? He told me that Dad made a will in Pearl City last week leaving the Bar F Ranch to him. How did he propose to prove it? He says that a lawyer named Crawford will arrive sometime today and show me the will. That'll be another guest for Sheriff Giles. I bluffed him for a while, but I'm afraid it didn't work. What do you mean? I pretended that my father had kept a daily journal and that it would prove he didn't intend to will the ranch to Kurt. What happened? Two men tried to rob the house tonight. If they were working for Kurt, he's going to be sadly disappointed. Did they take anything? Only an old picture album, and it won't be... This may be a way to make all of them convict themselves. I, I don't understand. Let's ride back to the ranch, Toto. Uh-huh. Wait here for the sheriff. Tell him I've gone on ahead. Uh-huh. Me do it. Come on, Silver. Let's go, boy. When the Lone Ranger and Millie Brewster reached the Bar F Ranch, they left their horses by the corral and approached the house on foot. No lights were visible, and they entered the house quietly through a rear door. Just a minute, I'll light a lamp. No, they'll come back searching for the journal. I don't think we'll have to wait very long. But how can you... Shh, someone's raising a side window now. Come on, Brophy. Yeah, you better commit yourself, Larkin. I won't be able to find anything in the dark. Yeah, might as well. Simple job like picking up a book without clearing it. It ain't our fault, I mean. Shut up. 
No one ain't listening any more alibi. Hey, look here, Larkin. Me and Red did the best we could. The best you could. Old man Brewster'd still be alive if I'd waited for you two galoots to beef him. <laughs> Had to do it myself. I'm glad to hear you admit it, Kurt. I, uh, who's there? Light the lantern, Millie. Remember, I've got you covered. Come here, Smith. You are... Where are you going, Larkin? Oh, Put your hands up, all of you. What's going on here? It's Sheriff Giles. These are the men I was telling you about, Sheriff. They killed the station agent. And Kurt Larkin's a man who murdered Sam Brewster. We heard him admit it. Good. I'll take care of him. They'll all three hang. You can bet on that. Now, then our work is finished. Hello, where are the horses? Silver Scout outside door. Time for us to ride, Kimosabe. Adios, Miss Brewster. Wait. Wait a minute. After all this, and I still don't know his name. <laughs> That's simple, Miss Brewster. You've been talking to the Lone Ranger. just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs>